Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh, today is Friday, and we have bombs to drop today. I'm not even kidding. I was up late last night, a girl named Emma reached out to me, and we had a long conversation. We walked through some YouTube stuff, I'm gonna show you to today. It's going to make you angry. We're gonna uncover some analytics for kids on Instagram. A lot of these family vloggers' kids have their own Instagrams, and they're blue check marked. The LeBrant family, big one. We're just gonna cover that today. We're not gonna dig in through their videos and their whole story yet, because that's gonna come soon. There's just too much to talk about today. We're going down the we're going down a rabbit hole today, okay? It's the holy shit playlist today. Okay? Some insane things are going on. We're uncovering them today, and a lot of the stuff is stuff you're gonna have to show your kids. So I'm gonna just realize too that some of you are letting your kids watch this stuff. Mm, I'm gonna actually make a video for kids. Like show this to your kids. Not sure if you're showing your family these videos. I swear a lot. I don't know. It's important topics. I hope I don't get too crazy. Just be careful. So, and we're going to analyze a, an influencer who got super pissed about when YouTube took the comments down, right? And all these YouTubers got pissed about it. Jess fam, because it take away their money. They don't care. It, 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 this is where it gets really crazy. Is that they care more about their content than they do their kids. And today it's going to be proof in the pudding. Let's do it. If we get this ball in, Amber, I promised you I'd say it again. If I get this in, Amber, you get something. For the love of Pete, I just, I'm white. Let's go. You guys brace yourself for this, okay? Before we get into this, just be in a headspace where you can be upset, okay? I mean, if you don't wanna be in a space today on a Friday where you're gonna be pissed off and probably feel gross, don't watch this video until you have the space for it, the wherewithal, the heart, the, the, the body, the mindfulness of it. Okay, this, today's video is not gonna be fun. We're gonna dismantle some stuff. We're gonna discover some things together and it's just gonna be gross is all I'm gonna say. First thing I wanna do is dive into, before I get into analytics and all the stuff that we've been talking about because that seems to be where the conversation is headed and this is where people are starting to say, see, here's the proof of why you shouldn't put your kids on YouTube. Of all the things I do, of all the people I make fun of and the people that get upset at me for, for making videos about Mike and all this stuff, this is why I do it, okay? I'm not gonna stop. Hear me, people. Hear me. Yes, I can be petty. Yes, I can be funny. Yes, I can be a douchebag. And you can call me a bully all you want. But the reason I do it is because that brings people to this channel. And then when I get people to this channel, I can do videos like this that help you understand why we shouldn't be allowing this, okay? So if that's what it takes to get people to my channel because I like when I make fun of Micah and bits of bish and tits of Tiffany and all that stuff, then so be it. I'm glad you're here for it, but also be here for this because this is the video. This is the content that matters. This is where shit will change. Before I go any further, please head over to The Problem with Family Vloggers on Facebook. The link is below. It'll be in the chat. It's everywhere. Join that page. If you're a lurker, whatever. Just don't be a douche. We're not doing anything wrong over there, so you can come on over and check it out all you want. This is where we're unloading the analytics, the, the data. People are talking about it. It's gossipy, sure, but the people are passionate about this topic for a reason. We're trying to protect kids. We're not jealous of mommy vloggers. And here's why we're not. Well, some of them might be, but I'm not. I love my life. I would never do this to my kids. The more I go down this rabbit hole, the more I go down this discovery of family vloggers, the more it scares the shit out of me. The more it's less funny and more scary. And I think a lot of you are on board with that. The more it becomes real about predators. That's what this is all about in the end. It's about predators. Well, it's not all about that. The main reason is, so, okay, it's twofold. The first one is, you're not allowing your kids to have consent. You're taking that away from them. We covered that in the last video where the author was like, too bad, I'm not gonna stop. They're my kids, I can do what I want. And that's what a lot of family vloggers say. What's well, my kids, I can do what I want. So, you know what? That's your prerogative and your kids are gonna hate you. I just hope that you have, when you're an old lady in a, you know, in a, in a, in a nursing home, your kids aren't gonna come talk to you. You know what I mean? Build your relationship, have a relationship with the kids, not on camera. We're gonna cover a little bit of that today. It's just a gross place to be. And we're all catching on to it. People are starting to see how shitty it is, okay? You know it, it's happening. Erin Williams, I, I, I put her picture up and I have a tutorial on how to blow up heads and make hands tiny and I posted her photo and she commented on it and she's blocking everybody that's commenting on the photo, anybody who follows me, so. It is what it is. If these people are doing that, they're scared of something, right? Why are you blocking people if you're not scared? You're scared because we're coming for your, I mean, we're coming for your lifestyle. That's just the way this is and sorry. 
But your lifestyle is, if you're building your wealth and shit off the backs of your children, you're wrong. You're just wrong. And I'm sorry. You shouldn't be allowed to do it. And people are like, who are you? Well, I am me. And if you don't want to listen to me, a father of four kids who worries about other kids, then you don't have to. That's your own prerogative. You want to make videos about me, about how I'm wrong and I'm bullying and blah, 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 just for your own clout? Cool. It's not why I do this. Okay? And you know that's not why I do this. And those of you who, do, who try to do these videos about me thinking you know me, just go read your own comments where people are, are actually, no, you don't understand what Josh is doing. Yeah, it looks petty on the outside because you're not really digging in. And that sucks. And so I need to make more of these videos and maybe that's my fault. But anyway, this is the video that matters. If you're going to watch one, you can watch this one. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to break down this video first. I forget her name. What is her name? Body Updates and My Thoughts. What is this girl's name? Okay, so this girl's name is Colleen Ballinger. Or Ballinger. And they have, a, I think her brother is a, a pretty prominent family vlogger. And so I want to start out by saying YouTube has done some stuff to mitigate the damage that is caused by maps and people using YouTube for their pleasures. Okay? It's twofold. The blame is way twofold here. Yes, maps exist and they're going to do this stuff and they're going to find it. But if you give them the content they want and you know it, you're dumb and you're putting your kids at risk. So Colleen Ballinger comes out with a video and she's... We're going to analyze this. I watched a little bit of it because I needed to get to the point where she was talking about it. And I haven't really gone farther than that because um, that's how I do. And so well, let's go through this. And then I'm going to show you something because she's a hypocrite. So <laughs> let's do this. Okay. So she's this one's called My Body Update and My Thoughts on YouTube. Okay. So this is when all the shit went down when YouTube took away the comment sections and family vlogs. Okay. And demonetized some stuff. I'm not sure which they demonetized because family vloggers still make a ton of money. So let's go through this real quick and let's, let's listen. I mean, obviously I had a baby, so that slowed things down a lot, but then something with YouTube happened that really was upsetting and I kind of wanted to talk about it. Um, you can just, you know, what are you without a crystal ball? Just ch chill. There's not all over your hands now. And then also I have a baby, so that makes me slow down quite a bit. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to make like a real video, not me like a hot mess in my robe in bed, like with no makeup on looking like a hot mess, but whatever. And here we are. Um, a few weeks ago, YouTube demonetized a bunch of my brother's videos. My brother's a YouTuber and he's a family vlogger. So he and his wife. Also known as. An asshole. And they're four kids. Like, they have a YouTube channel. It's great. You should go subscribe. No, you shouldn't go subscribe to that. Don't subscribe to YouTube family vloggers, okay? It's, don't do that. Um, and it's a wholesome channel. Like, nope. Very ad friendly. Very. That's the point. It's very ad friendly. Why would I? Why are you telling me to go subscribe to a family vlogging channel that's ad friendly? Why do I care if your f***ing channel is ad friendly? This is eye opening. Um very very wholesome there's nothing bad on that channel ever like except your kids being exploited that's i'd say that's bad that's bad right yeah that's bad you're wrong whatever your name is colleen or shit bags sometimes on my channel i'll cuss or like there'll be inappropriate things don't cuss okay you shit ass cussings for losers like their channel is clean 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 like the cleanest of clean no they want their content to be able to be watchable by anyone of any age, and they want parents to feel safe. They want you to, because that's where the big bucks come in. Exploiting children for children to watch. That's, so when the comments got disabled on YouTube, it shut down the ability for a lot of people to comment, which took away a lot of the engagement and the algorithm. And their kids watch their channel, so everything on their channel is very clean. Um, we get it. It's clean. Stop. A bunch of their videos got demonetized of my nephew Parker, who is five. And they were like, that's weird. And then all of a sudden, we found out that there was like, I guess, that were looking at videos of kids online and like preying on children online. And then she should say, which I don't know what she's gonna, she should be say, and you know what? That freaks us right out. And so we took our kids off YouTube right away. We did that because, man, we found this out and it's been proven. Oh, my God. So what would my brother do? He did the smart thing to do as any parent would probably do if they found that out. They took that content off right away. Good for you, brother. Let's hear what she says, though. Disgusting, horrible, awful behavior. Um, and they were like commenting like gross things that would comment. 
disgusting and we need to figure out a way to stop this. Oh, yes, thank you. She has a solution. Well, can I just give you a little bit of what I think you should do? Take it off so they can't have it. That's, that's how you do this. That's how you fix this, okay? You take it off so they don't have it. That's a good solution. Let's see, let's see what her solution is though. So I was thinking YouTube would try to work on a way to stop this. Now let me prep. They did, they took the comments off and they didn't go far enough as far as I'm concerned. They took the comments off. So what she's saying is I wish they would do the thing that I would like them to do, not you know, demonetize my brother's videos with his five-year-old in them. This is what she's about to say, and I'm about to be pissed. It's everything I'm about to say by saying, I love YouTube, I love my job, like. Can we be real? It's not a job. Like it is a job, but it's don't, stop calling it a job. You get on camera and show your boobs. That's not a job, okay? It's a privilege, and it's, you know, it's probably too good to be true for a lot of people. It's just stop calling it a job. And I'm not just saying this because I'm about to say other things. I'm saying this because I genuinely. Nah, you are. I mean it, like I do love this job. You might meet a lot of YouTubers who behind the scenes talk about how they don't like YouTube. They want to move past YouTube. Like YouTube is a stepping stone to something else or like they get burnt out on YouTube or whatever. Like I have never felt that way. I. She's throwing, she's throwing people under the bus. There's other people think that way, not me, not me, not me. But I'm about to say something that's gonna offend YouTube, so I just gotta make sure I say all these things first. YouTube, I love you, heartsies. I've always loved this platform. I've always loved that I get My God, videos from we get it. And like, we know you're kissing their ass because you're gonna say something bad. Move on. This person would be very difficult to talk to in a conversation. Meet you guys and talk to you, and like this is like therapy to me, and I- That I agree with always loved filming and editing videos like it's always been something that I've done since I was a little girl so this is like a dream job for me like I love this platform please get to the point when these pedophiles started doing these comments big advertisers sorry I'm talking so much and yes boring everyone if you are could have cut the shit out still watching thank you for being interested in this I promise I'll get to the point big advertisers who give YouTube a lot of money to put their ads in front of videos like this one. Um, they found out that there are pedophiles online writing comments on some of the videos of children. And they were like, peace. And they should have. And I would love to reward those companies with my business. If a company said, man, oh, this is problematic. There's maps commenting on these, these family vloggers. We're out of here. Hey company, if you've done that, you have my business because you're standing on values that I agree with. Awesome. That's how you vote with your wallet. You can reward companies who do good things too. You don't have to have to cancel people, but you can reward companies. We don't want our ad running before a video that has comments from So YouTube, in my mind, the right thing to do would be to find the people commenting these gross comments about children, figure out who posted those comments, see if they can, on the back end, figure out where those accounts were created because they can do that. Yes, I agree with her here, okay? This, but two things can be true at once, okay? Stop putting your kids on there so these people can't find it and find these people and find their addresses, find out who they really are because they can do that. They can both do that. Both things are work here, not one or the other. Both work in tandem to combat this. But here's, this, here's a logistical issue. YouTube already is terrible at flagging people. I get porn comments on my video all the time. These Asian ladies who are like, love you hearts. And they put a timestamp and they're like, come follow me. And they're all like gross. I report them instantly. And they're coming back in droves. These are bots, people. Maps are in the hundreds of thousands or millions of people. This is what we're going to uncover today with our bombshell. Okay. We know that they're being followed by hundreds of thousands of men in the uppers of 30 year old and higher. YouTube could do all they want and they can try that. They're never gonna be able to combat it. The only way to combat this for real is the abstinence of this content, truly. But if they do catch somebody doing that, YouTube should be responsible enough to find that person, report them to the proper authorities. I agree with that. Like YouTube can you know, see where the account was created, how the account was created. I'm assuming they can. I mean, I guess they shouldn't say that as a fact, but like, I would assume that like, you know. They can, but the logistics are impo almost impossible. You'd have to hire 4,000 people to do that. And they, you know, they could, because they're worth trillions of dollars. So yes, they could, and they should, but the logistics are insane, right? 
it's, it gets hairy because YouTube makes a lot of money off these channels. So it's, it's very nuanced and it sucks. When I signed up for a YouTube account, I had to put my name and my age and my birthday and like my location and like all this stuff. She can't be serious, right? Here's step one of how to be a hacker. You can sign up for any account you want, any age, any name you want through VPN, anywhere you want. It's so easy to be anonymous when you sign up for something. She's dumb. And you think, you think maps and these predators are going to sign up with their name and their address and like what they like and, you know, their favorite recipes? No. You would think that YouTube would find those comments and be like, let's go in and find who this person is, report them to police and get rid of this person, make them suffer the consequences of being a preying on young, innocent children. But that's not what they did. So what they did was they demonetized any video that had a child, a, a children, a child in it that could be in a compromising position. That could Amen. They should have done that. You don't have to put your kids in compromising positions or visuals at all. You don't have to put that stuff on the YouTube. You, if you want to put your kids on, just don't do that. At minimum, please don't do that. LeBrantz, we're looking at you today. Yep. Would be seen as a sexual position to, a so for example, gymnastics or dance competitions, the splits, things like that. Don't put it on there. It doesn't need to be on there. Why does that content need to be there? Why do you want people staring at your daughter's mid region while she's doing the splits or doing a dance? You know, people are watching this stuff. You know it because you know your analytics. So don't put it on there. You don't need it on there. Little, little children, if there's anything like that in your videos, your video gets demonetized, which means no ads can run before it. Yes. So that way they could go back to the advertisers and say, hey, people who used to give us a lot of money and now aren't giving us a lot of money, your ad is not gonna run before the videos of the comments because we took ads off those videos, so you can give us your money back. Um, that, to me, okay, let me continue. Then they, on top of that, decided to just disable all comments on all videos of children. And they should have. Thank God they did. So every family vlogger, any channel with like kids in it, including this one, by the way, this channel you are watching, which is not a family channel, like. Oh, is it not now? Can we have a little peek -see? Let's have a little peek -see, Colleen. Here we go. I'll bring it down for you guys to see it. Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings Lipstick. Dot com. Miranda Sings is her name. It's Colleen Ballinger. I don't know who this person I don't get. She's a, is that an MLM? We'll find out. Let's see. Is your family in your videos there, Colleen Ballinger? Well, there's a kid. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, this looks like kid comment. Oh, playing video games. That's probably for kids. That's targeted. to. Oh, there's a kid in that video. Hey. Oh, there's a kid. Yeah. Oh, there's another kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a kid. There's a kid. There's a kid. <gasps> there's a kid. Oh, yeah. Yours isn't family con. Yeah, there's a kid. Uh-huh. There's a kid. There's a kid. There's a belly. Oh, my God. The pregnancy shit. I'm over it. I'm so over pregnant women. Baby. Baby. Kid. They're all... The f this is all the same. Kid. I'm pregnant. I wore clothes. Look at the shit I bought at Amazon. Yay. Kid crying. Kid punching you in the face. And you, and you deserve it, kid, 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 kid. Yeah, your content's definitely, yeah. I, I totally see why you're upset that YouTube, you know, do, uh, turned off your comments because you're not a family channel, except for the f hundred videos of kids on your channel. I get it. I get it. Hypocrite. It's just me and my face. Like, yes, I was pregnant and vlogged that. And yes, sometimes you have seen my child, but. Yep. <laughs> She's like, YouTube only uh, took comments off people with kids in their videos. And mine's not like that. Yes, you see my kid. Ah, uh, you see in this here? People. These are influencers. Come on. Don't listen to them. Not really. Not very often. Doesn't matter. Still there. Um, Take them off then. All of my videos, every single video on this channel, the comments were disabled and... Should have been. Taken off. Good. Now, luckily, like... I knew how to go into my account and like figured out how to turn them back on. Really? So does that mean as a family vlogger army of people who hate family vloggers, maybe we should go re report those videos with kids in them. Hey, they found a loophole. She's about to expose the loophole and we're going to unexpose the loophole and re loop the loophole. But by turning them back on, it's putting my channel under scrutiny by YouTube, so now they can just demonetize anything they want. Um, if they so don't put the content there. If it's not such a big deal, 
don't put your kids on there. If it's not how you make your money, all that, what does it matter to you? If that's the case, YouTube says, don't put your kids on. We'll still pay if you don't. You're clearly projecting here that it really, really matters that your kids are on the show. That's what you're saying here. You're a hypocrite and a liar. I think there might be content in it that like. Now, here's the reason that's an issue. There's a lot of reasons it's an issue. The only reason it's an issue is that you put your kids on there and you shouldn't, you don't have to. That's the only thing you have to say here. Here's the issue. They're right. I want to keep children safe. Like Let's hear this before I get upset because I'm upset. That is my top priority. My top priority is, is not, oh, I could possibly not make money on a video or they're going to take comments off of my videos. Like that sucks for me. My top priority is keeping children safe. I have a baby like so then we have the solution family vloggers it's so simple if that's your top priority put your money where your mouth is take the content off so they can't have access to it you're never going to eliminate that section of our public they always sit in hiding and waiting and they always find the next way which we're going to uncover today they are not going away okay they've been around since bible times since day one they're not going away so the only way is the abstinence of the content is the only way. I don't know how more clear I can be about this shit. Mind blowing that this is not just the answer she's about to give. I would do anything to keep him safe. Would you take down your content? Nope, because it's still on your channel, bish. And I would do anything to keep all children safe. So me. I, I hope she says what I'm, I hope she says that. So then what we should do is if the, if the statement she just said was correct, I will do anything then the one thing you could do that's in your control is to take off the content. That's in your control. Complaining about videos getting demonetized or the comments taken off is not me being like, man, that's not fair for me. It's... Except that what's this whole video is about. <laughs> me angry that that is not a solution to this problem because people were like coming at me because I was complaining about this and saying like, all you cared about is the money or whatever. Like YouTube's trying to keep these kids safe. No, they're not because... I can't believe I'm talking about this in a video because I feel like I'm going to get backlash for it. Let's hear it. But I care more about the safety of children than anything else. And that's why I'm talking about this. By you No, and you're projecting and we all know that you care more about your paycheck because you just said this is your job. You care more about your paycheck than you care about your kids. That is proof because your kids are on your channel. You monetizing videos that have kids in it that a, pre a predator would find appealing that I watch and like be excited about and be gross about by demonetizing those videos. All you're doing is helping. Let's hear it. How? Because now doesn't have to sit through an ad to. What? How does that help? Are you serious right now? So are you suggesting that these maps and these predators should at least pay for the privilege to watch your kid in a compromising position? At least, at least let them pay for it by watching a vet ad and giving us money, YouTube. Are you f***ing serious right now? You cannot be serious. I gotta hear the rest of this shit. Watch a child and get excited. Now, can watch a video of a kid and prey on a child and watch a video and be disgusting about a child, a victim, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. this child. That you're putting out there. You're creating the victim, asshole. You're creating the victim. It's your child in this. Let's not forget it's your child and your nephew and niece that you're talking about right now. You're the one putting them out there to be victimized. As a victim of someone doing a disgusting thing and now they can watch it with no ads and they can't comment, which means there's no way to find them. So if they can comment, you can go to that person's profile and at least have some sort of clue. Of I, this, this is, she can't be serious. She cannot be serious about this. Again, we're going to, I'll tell you another way that they're doing this. And she's sort of right, but oh my God, this is such a simple solution, lady. Just take your shit off. Who they are, where they are and get them. In is she suggesting also that leave it on there, leave the comments on so you can, you can use my kids as bait to trap maps. Are you kidding me do you know how dangerous that is guys i can't believe i'm listening i cannot believe this person she seems smart to me too what the f 
support them. But if you don't have comments, now they can watch them ad free. So now there's not an, a pesky little ad to watch before. I, f I can't f what I'm hearing. Where they prey on children and they can't comment, so there's no way to find them. So now they can watch children in peace with no ads and do their nasty thing on children on the internet and the children are not safe. Okay, so you've been put in a position here. Okay, rock in a hard place. You say, okay, well, YouTube did this and I don't think I agree with it. So maybe I don't agree with it either. YouTube should have demonetized all kids' videos. They didn't go to as far as, as far as enough as I'm concerned. But here's your solution. You're stuck between a rock and a hard place. YouTube isn't gonna change. You're not gonna change a multi-billion dollar corporation owned by Google for your little shitty vlog. She's got 8.5 million subscribers. Pretty big deal on YouTube, okay? But at the same time, you're not gonna change a massive corporation and their algorithms the way they do things, okay? It's not gonna happen. And so this is where you're at now. And so you have a choice to make. Take your kids off or live in the world where you just admitted that they're gonna do that ad free and you're gonna keep it on there. You have a choice to make and you made your choice. You kept your kids on the channel, you didn't have to. YouTube put up a wall and said, look, we're not gonna go all the way because you know, we're gonna get feed, we're gonna get pushback and all that stuff. Like, you know, it's a corporation, it's, it's business, I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. So it's on you now to shape your content based on the parameters and the walls that they've put up. They did that to say, okay, well, stop putting your kids on. Low level, we're gonna do something, this is what we're gonna do. And that was on you now to say, okay, well, I can't put my kids in there anymore because it's not gonna be monetized and you decided to go against that. So to everyone who, I mean, this was weeks ago that I was venting about this online, but to everyone who online got angry with me that I was upset about this situation, why are you upset with me that I want to protect children from- Because the way that you're protecting your children is by keeping them online. You, YouTube made the rules. You have to abide by their rules, okay? If YouTube made the rules that you're not gonna, we're not gonna monetize kids in compromising positions and all this stuff and young kids doing splits and all this stuff, you have the wherewithal and you have the right and everything to take that content off, okay? You abide by their rules. You work for YouTube, they pay you. This isn't the other way around, okay? They pay you. You don't go to your employer and say, ah, oh, I want everything here changed. I want a new desk, I want this or I'm leaving, okay? They're gonna be like, bye. This is, this is disgusting, the, way, the, 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 the clout that this girl thinks she has, is all I'm saying. And chooses to use her platform to come at the platform that, she, that pays her to say you didn't do this right or you didn't go far enough, except for that you could easily mitigate all the thing if you're so worried about your children, easily mitigate it by just taking them off, just by taking them off. Problem solved, just like that. You've got eight million subscribers. If you took your kids off, do you really think you'd lose that much money? No, you wouldn't. So I don't know why you think you need to keep them on anyway. Because that's why I was mad. I think it is ridiculous to say, I'm gonna punish the creators, I'm gonna punish these families with children because they're who might watch them. That is blaming the victim. You made the victim. You put this content of your children in bathing suits, doing their period shopping, whatever you call it, bra shopping, all this stuff. You put this out here in, in a position where par most parents like me would say, what the f Most of us are saying, you're wrong. Most parents, I think in the real world, would not do what these people are doing. Okay, most parents who love their children would not compromise their safety, their privacy, and their whole world for a few dollars. Okay, I don't care how wealthy, a lot, most parents won't. What tends to, this tend, this is a conversation, this tends to draw parents who have no other thing to offer the world into this world because this is what they have. They use their looks, they use their, they don't personalities, they use their looks. That's basically all they have, they're yummy mummies, right? And they say, look at me. It's about your looks. And then the children come along and then you start bringing in predators. And we know in some cases, it's more than half of your audience. Do other things. This is, a, this is an avenue you chose. So she's saying where she's projecting right here, this is their job. YouTube, you're gonna damage these, these families by taking away their way, the way they make their money. Good, don't make your money off your kids. If you're, good, if you're good enough and smart enough and funny enough and interesting enough to watch, you don't need your kids. You don't need them. Get them off. That is people going, well, well, why are you putting videos of your kids doing gymnastics and dancing? That's a, gymnastics is a sport. Yeah, hypersexualized sport, very much so. Your little girl dancing in a leotard? Yes, it's gonna be fodder for maps. That like Parker has worked really, my nephew Parker has worked really hard 
to be good at. He's he trains in mm -hmm. gymnastics, yeah. and it's a sport. And why is YouTube sexualizing? YouTube isn't. You are. The sport does, and these guys come for it. And again, why does it have to be on YouTube? He works hard to be a gymnast. Cool. You don't have to put it on camera. My kid is, is an elite trampolinist. I put a couple things out there here and there, yeah, because he's proud of it, but you don't need to put on YouTube. That's not why you do it. Are they, are they, is she saying that we're only having this kid in elite athletics because we, it gives us content? That's what she's saying. We put him in elite athletics because it gives us content. LeBrant family, their daughter's a dancer. That's, and they use it as content. It's content. How dare they tell us what content we can use? If your kid is good and loves sports, doesn't need YouTube. You don't need it. Pour into your kids, let them do it privately. You can do shit privately, everybody. You know what? If you did an Instagram post that you went to the gym, did it really happen? Did the workout happen? It still happened. Okay? You don't have to fucking document everything. I'm so fucking angry at this. Him, this innocent, sweet little five-year-old who has worked so hard doing gymnastics, he loves gymnastics, and now they cannot film it, they cannot put- You can film it all you want. Film anything you want. You film all of it. For your records, you can even put it online. You can privatize it. You can share it with family. You can put it in your own hard drive. Right? You can say, here's a private website. You could put it on a channel that doesn't make you money, right? Somewhere else. And you can share that and you can have those memories. Why do you need to share it with the entire world for it to be of value? That's scary. So they cannot share his experiences with it to inspire other kids to want to do the same because pet. And I hate this excuse. We put all this on the internet because it inspires families to talk about. There's going to be a video I just saw a girl talking to her eight year old about SEX. And filming the whole thing for the world to see. I'm like, look, it's important to talk to your kids about that stuff. Yes, you don't have to film it for the world to see. I hate this excuse though. We put it out there to inspire others. We have professional athletes for that, okay? You can follow any professional athlete. You don't need a six-year-old to tell me what I need to do. Don't use this as an excuse. This is not, this is, all this is, guys, is an excuse to say this is a justification of what they're doing. Oh, we do this. We went period shopping. We measured bras because nobody does this. F off. How do we get by without family vloggers up to this point? How do we survive without all these and family vloggers telling us how to live and be parents. How did we do it? How? Can watch him do it and, and YouTube, instead of trying to figure out a way to stop these This is their way. I don't, how obtuse can you be? This is the way. Logistically, it's impossible because they're just gonna create other accounts. They're just gonna go underground more. If you call them out, they're just gonna go underground more. They're very, very smart about what they do, okay? They're just going to find another way. So YouTube said, well, because we can't mitigate that, we have to put up the wall here. Sorry, families, but this is the way we do this. This is the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And they figured out with their analytics and their, their smart brains that work at Google, here's how we got to do it. Unfortunately, it's going to make a lot of people upset, but here's the best way to mitigate this disaster. And they did it right, to be honest with you. Not enough, but they did it. Is going, don't post that content or you can't monetize it. And we're going to take off all your comments and Parker's not allowed to show that he's excited and happy. So Jacob can show that. <laughs> I can't believe this shit. He's excited about sports in the videos and talk to the, the viewers about sports and, and playing outside and all his favorite hobbies, drawing and cooking, all his. I'm sure you could put drawing and cooking videos on and not get demonetized. What is she, she's bullshit, this is straight bullshit what she's saying right now. She's trying to like, she's trying to muddy it by saying, well, he can't, you know, be a normal kid anymore on YouTube. What they're saying is don't put your kids in compromising positions and compromising outfits and clothing and dance moves. Otherwise we're taking that off because our advertisers don't want to be connected to that. And that's the advertisers voting with their wallets. And YouTube is listening to the advertisers because listen to everybody, YouTube's a business. They're not, they're not a moral compass for people. They're here for business. And when companies are like, I don't want to be attached to that, then YouTube has a responsibility as a business to the shareholders to say, well, we can't put that up there. Economics 101 and I'm not even smart at all. Their hobbies, Bailey can talk about reading and you know, any type of activity that their family does, they can all talk about it. But Parker's not allowed to talk about his sport and the thing he's worked hard on because otherwise their family will get punished because can't watch him. That is blaming the victim. It's a stretch lady. That's a stretch. Punishing the victim instead of. Where did the victim come from? Why is he a victim? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a scenario. Okay, you're gonna take your kid to a park. Inside this park, there's 10 individuals, 10 men, okay, sitting at this park. They're allowed to be there, it's a public place. They're allowed to sit there, they're allowed to do whatever they want. They're all wearing trench coats. One of them, you know specifically, is a predator. Do you let your kid go and play there by themselves? You know that one is watching. Answer the question, you know you're not going to. Who made the victim in that case? And if, you, and if you did allow your kid to go there and that kid got 
hurt or murdered or whatever it is, and you, and you allowed it knowing that there were people that are doing that, did you create the victim? You put your kid into a compromising position where they weren't safe and you didn't protect them. You can, pre you can, you can prevent victims by not allowing them to be victimized. Put that on a t-shirt. Blaming and punishing the person who did something wrong. Not only that. And I understand how that sounds. So people are like, well, what about all these victims in the past where they were like, it's, it, it, I dressed like this, I went to a bar and I got, I got arred because I dressed like this. I'm not saying that, that's a different world. It is on people, it is definitely on the predator to not be the person that does that, yes. But look, it's different when it comes to kids because we are the sworn protectors. We are the people protecting them. This is a different case than like people, the excuse of, oh, well, she, was, she looked like she wanted it or she, you know, all that stuff. That is completely different. Victim blaming saying, yeah, she wore a miniskirt at a bar so she deserved it. That's so much stupider than saying, I let my go kid play at a park with 10 people. One of them was definitely a map. This is way different, okay? And then, and then a lot of these family vloggers will say, well, it's their right to go to the park and play. I mean, it shouldn't be my responsibility that that person's sitting there and, and doing that, but it's your responsibility to protect them. And if you had an, an any parent with any soul who is good at, their, good at their job and good at what they're supposed to do would say, I'm, I don't want you going there. I mean, we do that for way less. We have friends, uh, some of our kids, teenagers stuff have friends who are like, I'd rather you didn't hang out with that person because I think they're a bad influence on you. Um, I think that's not a good place for you to be. And it's on us to protect our kids. That is not, you can literally eliminate this whole problem by just not putting them into the pit, right? YouTube's the pit. There are predators watching and you know it. You know the analytics, we'll uncover it today. But furthermore, a lot of YouTubers didn't really care that this happened because YouTubers like, well, I don't have a kid who does gymnastics or a kid who does dancing, I don't have kids. So this problem doesn't affect me. You're wrong, YouTubers. If there's any YouTuber watching me right now, probably not because it's been- I'm watching. It's really long and boring, but it does affect you because what YouTube did was an advertising company, people who give them money to put ads before our videos said, we're not going to give you any more money. You can't use our ads because there were comments. And so YouTube said, we'll take the comp. She said this already. Yes. And that's their right. She's basically saying companies shouldn't have the right to do that. She's saying YouTube needs to find those people, do all that work for us and all this stuff. And then, you know, then say, hey, we took care of it. Not, you're never going to take care of it, lady. Again, tale as old as time. This is, a, this is a person, people, a sect of our society that are sick individuals. They're going to be here forever. They're going to find another way. It's a way and we'll take the money away from the YouTuber instead of fixing the problem. Basically, this would be like if a, a let's say Corey, okay? Corey's gay. Corey has a YouTube channel. Corey's my best friend. Let's say there was a okay. comment in the comment section that was homophobic. This happens often. And let's say McDonald's, a big, this has never happened, but let's just pretend. McDonald's gives lots of money to YouTube to put ads before videos. McDonald's doesn't, by the way. They don't, they don't need to. And McDonald's has an ad before one of Corey's videos and they see a homophobic comment that calls him a horrible homophobic word. And McDonald's calls YouTube and says, hey, we're not giving you any more money. We don't want our ad playing on a video where there's a homophobic comment. This whole pedophile situation would be like if in that situation YouTube went okay don't worry McDonald's give us all your money still because we're just going to take all the comments and all the monetization off of any video that has a person of LGBTQ apples and oranges lady we're talking about protecting kids here and yes YouTube does this I know they do this and so that's another argument to be made and if that person is on them to take YouTube to task for doing that, because it's not the responsibility in the comments, right? She's saying it's not the responsibility of the person in the video for the comments that are being made below. Apples and oranges, because that's a different world we live in. That's hate speech, what, they're, what that person has said in the comments. And yeah, they can be held accountable for that. But what's happening here is you're putting your kid into a pit of vipers and you're saying, YouTube, take care of it. And you just don't have to put them in there at all. At the, at the core of this is you shouldn't put your kids on YouTube anyway. Okay, if you want to talk about LGBTQ issues and all that stuff that's going to get people in, in hate comments, then that's, that's a different story. We could talk about that another time. Yes, that could be a problem, but that's not this. Stop comparing. That's, that's a crazy comparison. Community. So if you're gay, if you're trans, if you're anything, if you're any type of person that could get a homophobic comment, we're going to take away all your comments and take away all of your money. They didn't do that, though. There's no way. That way, McDonald's will still give us money. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is okay. Yes, I do see what you're saying, and I do a low level agree with you because I know that there are people out there who do this type of content who get flagged and they don't, 
But again, guys, this is the world we live in. We live in a world where an advertiser says, you know what, we're, a, you know, take McDonald's, as she said, for example, look, we're basically targeting kids and families, right? McDonald's isn't targeting LGBT community. They don't, they stay away from all the politicized things, right? If I say, I'm gonna have to delete all her P words off here, okay? This is the way YouTube works. You play the game because they pay you. If the advertiser doesn't want to advertise with the content you have to give, that is the advertiser's thing. Take it up with the advertiser then. If you say, why aren't you sub subscribing to this? Then take it up with the advertiser. YouTube is just saying, hey, the advertisers want to be on there. This is a free country. They have a choice to make. When it comes to kids, though, we have a choice to make to protect the kids. And if the parents aren't going to do it, then we step up to do it because the parents clearly aren't doing it. It's two different worlds. But look, it's still a business, everybody. A business should be allowed to choose who they advertise with. They don't want to advertise with somebody who advertises something against them. Like that could be said for anything, for anything. Someone doesn't like the fact that I call out family vloggers. You know, Huggies isn't going to sponsor my channel. Okay. They're like, I don't want to be on the channel. I'm not going to be upset that Huggies doesn't want to sponsor me because I'm anti-family vlogger. Okay. This is stupid. There are many, 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 many pro LGBTQ businesses and corporations out there that would sponsor it. So I'm just saying, but she's saying overall, they'll take the blanket, take it down because they're getting that stuff. I get the, I get the problem. We have to measure this. It's a business. And it's a business that again, kids are the most vulnerable people in our society. And we have to protect them at all costs because these parents are not big issue the fact that youtube instead of fixing the problem is pun they did punishing the creator an innocent person stop saying punishing the creator again you're not being punished all you have to do is change the way you do it we shift and migrate the way we do things as humans all the time if one of those things is like okay we need to make money on youtube how are we going to do this okay well let's take our kid off in, in leotards cool awesome that should do it Ding. Or let's take our kids off altogether and like let's do parenting vlogs about being real parents and you know in, you can talk about parenting stuff without having your kids in there. You really can. You, if you want to give lessons on how to do bra sizes and period kits, you don't need your kids in the video to do all that stuff. Everybody, if that if your excuse is that, well, do we do this to bring awareness? You don't need a kid in the video to bring awareness. Cutie is a perfect example. When we talked about this. You don't need to exploit eleven year old girls to talk about how it's bad to exploit eleven year old girls, <laughs> right? Again, these arguments are stupid, and this is a video that debunks them. Please watch this. Kids are innocent and they should not be punished. They should not be put on the, ch kids are innocent. And her next sentence should have been, and they should not be put on the internet for everybody to consume and their privacy destroyed without their consent. That's what should be the next thing she says here. Because there are But that's not what she's Just like. Say. She's blaming everybody else. And again, I'm not saying these maps are not to blame. They are to blame. They are, a, they are part of our society that needs to be expunged. I'd, and this might make, give me ratioed, but I believe that if you are a map and uh, that is something that you cannot, I don't know. I, I feel like if you're that in that type of society, you definitely don't belong here and you should be castrated. I think you should be cast out to an island somewhere. I do. I believe that they do not belong in our society. And this shift in the world, the way that we think that everybody belongs, everybody can be who they want. Again, MA, and maps are trying to be part of the LGBT community. I tried to say this last time. They're trying to be, attach themselves to that moniker. And LGBTQ wants nothing to do with them. Nobody does. But the way that we're shifting our thoughts are saying like everybody has a chance to be who they are. If this is who you are, do you know there's actually genetical proof that maps are, that is genetic? You can find genetically that someone could be a map. I'm not even kidding. Whereas LGBTQ, um, there's no genetic markers for people who are going to be transgender or gay or straight. There's no, not, not that I have biology as far as the last time I did research and I could be completely wrong about that. But there are genetic markers for maps. Okay. Just saying. If... An LGBTQ person, a trans person, that is in inherently who they are as a person, and we, we want to give them all the options to be who they are, that's great, and I love it. Do it. Not going to hurt me. Then say to these people, well, that's who you are. That's who you are. Where does it stop? I'm saying, these people, I don't care if that's who you are. If that's who you are, then sorry, then you, then you just lost the genetic lottery, and you need to go live in the sewer because that's where you need to be. That's As a parent, that's what I need to say. But the conversation is shifting. You need to be very careful with it. Okay, we need to be very diligent that they don't get to keep taking steps inwards because this is becoming normalized. This stuff is because they allow this to happen and people, parents putting your stuff out there, you're perpetuating it. You're making it worse. And you're making it legal. And we're going to cover that soon. I know this is such a long video. Wow. Corey would be innocent if someone said a homophobic comment to him and then he got punished. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, he is. Again, apples and oranges. I think it happened. If there are racist comments and a brand is like, we don't want our ads running before a video with racist comments, that would be like YouTube being like, okay, we'll pull comments and monetization from anyone of any other. Apples and oranges. Okay. YouTube could mitigate this entire thing by if someone has great content about homophobia and LGBTQ, just eliminate the comments, but still monetize it. 
So we can talk about that. Yes, I do agree that she has a point there. But again, we're talking about kids here. Stop comparing. These are different comparisons, big time different comparisons. Protection of kids, paramount. Instead of trying to find the people saying the racist comment and banning them from the platform and finding them and reporting them to the police or reporting them to whoever they need to report. Do you see how this is backwards? So anyway, this pedophile situation happened. All my comments were pulled from YouTube, from this channel. All of my brother's family's um, comments were all pulled. We put them back up. Um, and then, of course, their monetization has been taken from a lot of their videos. Good. Um, this is a big issue, and no one's really talking about it anymore. People were kind of talking about it for a hot second, but everyone's like, meh, it doesn't really affect me, moving on. Kind of affects everything. I think people started saying, oh yeah, for a hot second, let's, let's, they got upset real quick. It's a hot flash in the pan upsetness, and they're like, wait, oh yeah, okay, so this is good for the kids. Oh yeah, I'm on board for that. A lot of people started realizing, oh, okay. I see what they're doing now. I see, I, they're thinking with their brain. They're thinking, okay, well, they're never going to be able to stop this, this deluge of crazy people. So what instead YouTube did was said, okay, well, we're going to put a wall up here. And that's one way we can do this because that's just how we have to do this. It's the bottom line. It's just, it's this sh shortest distance between two points. One, first of all, what the heck? Why aren't people more upset that like YouTube is not only not stopping the from watching these videos, but they're kind of like, they can't stop people. It's a public platform. YouTube can't stop someone from making a fake account and watching it. What she just said there is literally the, one of the most impossible things you could do. YouTube cannot understand who's signing up for fake accounts. They can't do that. They don't have that. Nobody can. Nobody can. She's telling people and YouTube and corporations, please read people's minds and see the future. That's what she's saying. Do you understand how stupid that sounds? Helping them by not making them watch ads and not letting them comment. Um, here's the tea though. I've had conversations with people at YouTube, wonderful people. I love YouTube. I want to work with them to fix this problem. Yeah, you have 8 million subscribers. You make tons of money on YouTube. And the people I've talked to have said they're working really hard to fix this problem. And I have the solution here, everybody. Come on over to this channel. Here's the solution. Take your kids off. I've expressed their want and desire to fix this issue. I just want to know what their plan is because I haven't heard anything. All it's been is kind of just been like, this happened and then everyone stopped talking about it. That's what YouTube wanted. They wanted, they did something, they put a bandaid in place and said, okay, well, here's what we're going to give you. Because so many people were complaining about this. The issue they did this is because people were complaining about the comments. Guys, this wouldn't have happened if people weren't up in arms about like, look what's happening. They uncovered this giant ring of peas doing this craziness with the comments and the, t and the time stamping and all the stuff. It wouldn't have happened if people didn't get up in arms about it, okay? YouTube had to do something, and then they, they did the big thing, and then they're just waiting for it to die down, and it did. And now, the next thing's coming, the next big step, which is YouTube's going to have to demonetize anything with a kid that's minor. But still, videos get demonetized, and comments are taken off of the victim instead of fixing the issue. So, that happened. <clears throat> These kids are not victims until you make them victims, Okay. If they're not there to be consumed, they are not victims. They could never be a victim if you don't put them on the internet. They are not, it's not different than someone saying, I'm going to wear this skimpy outfit to a bar. I hope I don't get victimized. And if they are, that's not on the person being victimized. Okay. That's a choice that an, that an adult can make as a consenting adult. You don't get these kids consent to do what you're doing. There is a big disparage here. There's a big difference. That's why this is apples and oranges. And I was really frustrated. So I didn't want to really upload anymore because I was really upset about it. And like, mm, yeah, you don't want to upload anymore. Make some money. Yeah, right. I was like, well, now what? Like anything I post could potentially just like the monetization could be taken off. The no, just take your kid off. Why can you not understand this? Why does everything have to be about, well, I'm not taking my kid off. Why is it all and everybody else except for you as the parent to say, well, I, oh, I see what they're saying. Yeah, this is dangerous. Maybe I should take my kid off. This could be taken away and I could get punished for the wrongdoings of other people. And that really upset me. And um, so, yeah that happened and i'm not trying to stir up drama right now i'm just telling you guys why i kind of left for a while and an issue that i felt like was a big that'll show them that'll show them you left for a while in your shitty blogs problem it's probably going to continue to be a problem because in youtube's defense like i love this platform like i said this is a hard thing to solve there are billions of comments on this platform and there are so many channels so many videos like there's no way to monitor it all there 
Why don't you just say that to start? That's why they did what they did. That's all you had to say. <laughs> YouTube, there's no way you can do any of this, but YouTube, do the thing. <laughs> these people don't have th these people don't think of things. They, they, they just, this is why this shit is so terrible. This is just spouting content, listening to yourself speak. Blah. Listen to me, I'm an influencer. I know shit. You don't know shit, lady. No way. So they are trying to figure out a way to monitor it, I hope, I'm assuming, and... Yeah, you can report it. ...solve this issue, but I haven't heard anything right now. They, you know, they've said their fix is to take off comments on videos of kids, but I feel like that's blaming the victim, and I don't see how that's a solution to the problem at all. I'm all ears, Miss Solutions. What do you have? What do you got? You want to keep your kids on this channel to make money off them? What's your solution? Billions of comments. You said it yourself. No way a, 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 co a company could mitigate that by unless they just say, look, the only way we're going to be able to do this is because we don't have the wherewithal. We don't have the staff capacity. We'd have to have 400,000 people working on just the solution. Can't afford it. You're going to lose billions. So they said, look, here's the easiest way to, to mitigate this disaster. And they did what they had to do as a corporation, as a money-making corporation. So that's kind of how I feel about it. And I'm really Is hoping it? that, what well, my stomach just crawled. Chill. I'm really hoping that they're trying to figure it out. But anyway, that's the tea. And like I said, I'm not- That's tea, it's not tea. <laughs> Why is that tea? Strip drama, I'm not trying to like talk smack about YouTube because I actually really do love this platform and I'm- like, We get it, awesome. lady. I actually would love to work with YouTube to fix issues like this and like- Yeah, you sound like you have tons of great solutions for YouTube. They're all looking at you like, mm, don't hire this lady, okay? She's a family vlogger. Don't ever hire a family vlogger to do anything for you, okay? Pay bits of bish, a thousand bucks, she'll teach you how to do it all. And from a creator's perspective, how I feel and like what I think could help and how I'd be willing to help like monitor comments. Yeah, you're gonna monitor comments? Billions of comments? Thanks. You're a freaking YouTuber. You don't even read your comments, okay? You have eight million subscribers. You're gonna read, you can't even read your own comments. I only have 45,000 subscribers. I can hardly read all my comments, I try. Barely get through it. I can hardly do it. What is she saying here? She's bull. She's just straight trying to be like, here's my solution. I'll help read comments. Are you really gonna do that? Yeah, yeah. While you're vlogging about your family and making, you know, forty thousand dollars a month, part more, getting your ad revenue and your sponsorship. Yeah, f off. On my end and like what I can do to help, you know. Um. Yeah, maybe if YouTube. Hey, maybe she has a solution here. Maybe she's onto something. Maybe if you put it on the family vlogger channels to monitor their chats, and they have within thirty minutes of posting or within thirty minutes of a comment landing on a page, these rich ass family vloggers hire their own staff to monitor comments. And if a comment lasts, it gets reported by an outside source or for whatever reason, and it stays up on a page for longer than a day, they get dinged and the comments come off. You know what? Maybe that's a solution. Maybe these people ha are you put it on them to hire the people to monitor their comments and monitor their platforms and all that stuff. But at the same time, again, it's just easy. That's not going to help because you shouldn't put your kids on YouTube. So, nope. I want to work with them. I think all creators would want to work with YouTube to fix it. Because, uh, I don't know, I think this band-aid they put on it, the issue of just like taking away comments and monetization is not going to fix it. In fact, it's not. We're going to uncover why. It's going to hurt it because you're blaming victims instead Stop of... Stop saying that. Stop using that freaking moniker. This whole like, well, this is the, this is the key word we're going to use here. We're saying YouTube victim blaming. They're victim blaming. Where do the victims come from? Parents are supposed to protect their kids. You don't have to put them out there. You've created the victim. You've literally created it and you didn't have to. I know how that sounds. It's such weird. It's a wrestle for me to say that. But as a parent, it is our job to make sure our kids aren't victims. Again, you're not going to let them go out. If you live in a city, you walk down the street by themselves to the store or whatever, you're not going to let them do that. You know what? That's their choice to make if they wanted to, right? They're, they're autonomous human beings and a lot of parents say, oh, I do what you got to do. No. We're supposed to protect. Finding and reporting the people who are bad. She said that 48,000 times. But that's my opinion. Um, yeah, and it's a shitty opinion. Go to bed, actually I'm gonna pump and then I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah, you're not a family vlogger, right? You can pump your boobs like everybody, oh my God. Did you need to say that? You just had this conversation. Oh, I got to pump, make sure you watch my pumping videos. Hopefully I will remember to vlog more. No, let's hope you don't. You should probably, you've done enough damage. But. I suck at this. Mm-hmm. I suck at vlogging. Mm-hmm. Being a mom is a lot of work and... Mm-hmm. And so when you need to film it all day long and every day, it's already a... B these like bits of bish and tiff bots and, and, you know, Brits of tish and all these people who are, have babies. Do you know how hard it is to have a fucking newborn? I know. My wife knows. People know. And then the, and the fact that you that you have to make time to film on top of that, there's no way you can be a proper mother to a newborn when you're concerned about vlogging. 
right? We agree on that? Okay, so that's out of the way. I wanted to discuss that because that really got me and I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to be tearing this lady a new a-hole because that was straight up bullshit, what she just said there. Okay, so yesterday on the Facebook group, The Problem with Family Vloggers, that's the DCP. Head over there and follow. Get on there. I found LeBrant Family Analytics. So I want to show you this analytic for um, LeBrant Family. Let me find it for you here. LeBrant Family, 12.8 million subscribers, okay? Total views, 4 billion. Okay, their suggested price range, 307,000 to advertise them. So at minimum, if you want to advertise with LeBrant's, you have to pay them over $100,000 for one ad. Insane. Okay, so why they do this, guys, is not, they're not doing this for fun family vlogging. They make bank on this. Their analytics are 24% male. That is a really, really big jump because they have older kids, right? Okay, so that's basically 24%, definitely on the higher end of the male category. Uh, boost in teenagers, but you're still looking at normal. They have a younger audience. Between 13 and 24 is makes up 38% of their... No, sorry. So here's Social Blade. I've spent so much money on this, guys. You have no idea. Purchase reports. So let's dig into LeBrant's. Where are they? This, this page you guys are looking at right now represents over $450 US of analytics. Thank you for supporting me. And if you want to continue to support me, Ko-Fi is in the link below. Please consider supporting Buy Me A Coffee and I'll continue to buy these things and I will make them available to everybody for free. Okay? Okay, look, look at their demographics here. Um, so you look at their, their analytics here. Um, males. So they have a big push here. The 8 point, about 9% between 18 and 24. Okay, cool. And another 10% of, so half of their male audience, so 12%, basically between the age of 25 and 64. So it's pretty high. Right, I see that. Um, as opposed to someone like Jess Fam, theirs is more indicative of. A, so their male audience is twenty percent. They have younger kids, more boys, and so yes, yeah, see the see the average here that hits. But then still, still troubling numbers between twenty five and sixty four, right? So and their gender breakdown is twenty percent male, right? They 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 do well, right? They between thirteen thousand twenty four thousand one point two million views are huge, right? That's kind of a normal ish vlog. Jess Fam has a very loyal audience. She's one of the real ones. Everybody says. So funny, someone commented the other day, they said, I hate all family vloggers, next sentence, except for this one, they're the real one. No, you gotta hate them all, sorry. But, okay, and I wanted to di dive into um, something with Social Book right here. So if I go into Mila and Emma, okay, 285,000 views, and I think this is the LeBrant kids, Social Book will not unlock their gender demographics. I don't know why, I don't know why. But, don't matter. I went into uh, their Instagram. Okay, so this is what I'm digging into now. I'm digging into kids' Instagrams. Okay, so if you look at, I think this one is, this is Ellie. This is an ace family child. Okay, she has 57 million, oh, sorry, 5 million followers on Instagram. Okay, Catherine McBroom and Austin McBroom's daughter. 5 million. She's blue check marked on Instagram. And she's five, four. Four years old, blue check marked on Instagram. Why do you need to be blue check marked on Instagram when you're four years old? You're likely still in diapers. You're still pissing your bed. You have no idea of this. It's just a money, they, they, she makes money for their family. That's what it is. These people make tons of money and this is how they do it. This is atrocious. Instagram has rules and how they break these rules is by say, count monitored by parent. <laughs> Who gives a shit? It's still underage. The channel is literally, the whole freaking Instagram is about the kid. So it's, who cares if it's monitored by the parent, they're breaking the rules and they're getting away with it. Instagram, fix this. But here's the danger. Their male demographic for this little girl who's four years old is higher than the female demographic. Explain to me, people, why men between the ages, like let's say 13, 17, they're teenagers, still, I don't know why teenagers are looking at a four-year-old girl online. Boys, we're all, we're covering boys specifically, okay? But why are boys, men between the ages of 18 and 44 looking at a four-year-old girl on Instagram? And at a rate of 57% of 5 million. Ready? What is 57% of 5 million? 57% of 5 million is 2.85 million. 2.85 million men are looking at a little girl on Instagram. Don't see a problem yet? Cool. All right. Well, you're dumb. Let's move on to LeBrant family's daughter. 5.2 million subscribers. Everly Rose, almost my daughter's age. She's seven years old. My daughter, Everly, eight, named her before this one, and their name is spelt dumb, makes 30000 per suggested post. $30,000 for a suggested post on this little girl's Instagram page. 
She's a dancer. She's very look. She got look here. She's in a bathing suit with bunny ears. This girl is very hypersexualized, and this family claims to be Christian. Little Brant family, I'm coming after you. I'm an ex-pastor. I'm going to destroy everything you guys have to say about what it means to be a Christian and how you're using it for your platform to sell. You're using if you use okay, look, family vloggers, assholes, selling MLMs, assholes. But if you use your faith to make money, you're just as bad as uh, these pastors who do it. So you're, I'm coming right after you. This girl is inappropriate. Splits, dancing, bunny ears, just gross. Now look at her demographics, everybody. 70% male. Lowest percentage is teenagers. So we can just eliminate that. But here we go. 24%, 19%. That's 50% of their male audience of 70% is watching this little girl and is between the ages of 18 and 44. What is 70% of 5.2 million? This is why this conversation matters. Millions of men, older men, are ingesting photos and videos of your daughter. Millions. The LeBrand family, we're going to cover that hopefully very soon. They've had stalker issues. They've had their dog murdered, I think. Like, there's some insane things going on. They are in danger, and they know they are, and they vlog about it. And it's part of their content. Scary. When your daughter is being targeted, look at 6% of their freaking um, views are from Russia. Guys, I can't, I can't stress to you how much this is inappropriate. Instagram, at minimum, needs to remove every kid off their platform. I'm sorry, if you're not of age to be on their platform, you need to be taken off. Instagram makes money off these kids too, okay? Instagram needs to be held accountable. There needs to be, we need to start campaigns for everything. Get kids off Instagram. They're being consumed by, by maps, by predators. Overwhelmingly more than they are being consumed by women and a lot of these family vloggers are saying well You know they're out there because you know families like to watch this stuff You know that your daughter's 70% of men three over three million men are looking at your daughter on her Instagram. Does that not creep you out? Sorry Take her off. This has got to stop people this this is like DEFCON purple We have to make we have to make moves. We have to start talking to politicians. It's time. We got to start figuring this out Let's all hands on deck. We need to start a nonprofit organization. It's, it's less now about commentary and videos and all this stuff, guys. We need to start an organization that starts figuring out how to stop this. If that doesn't freak you out enough, let's go back to what she was saying. She's like, well, why doesn't YouTube just do the thing they're going to do? Well, they did the thing they did. And here's what happened to that. All, I'm going to show you guys something real quick before I do this. Type in the Weiss life. And look what comes up first. Okay, those are the purple are my searches. I want to show you something. This is what's being searched when you type in the Weiss life. Period. Christmas, birthday shopping, bras, makeup, broken bones, back to school, Halloween, puberty. This is what people are searching when they do it. Now, that's not even what I'm talking about. Let's hit the old enter button, okay? Now, what you do is you hit filter, and you go to playlists. And you're like, hey, people make playlists all the time. I make playlists. Yeah, cool. Playlists are cool. Unless you're a predator making a playlist. Rock Rockasaurus Rex, one of my favorite tiny tanks. Okay, came up and found this. This is a playlist by Sebastian Schmeideck. Don't know who it is. It's a nobody. Sebastian Schmeideck has 67 subscribers. No content on his channel. But look at his playlists. Baptism. Baptism. German. Videos. 91. But look at his Weiss Life channel that he made. This is a playlist made by a dude on YouTube who has 67 subscribers. Underwater gymnastics, back to school clothing haul. What's in my backpack? What's in my backpack? What I got for my 13th, turning into emojis. Huge Black Friday, huge Disneyland, $20 Secret Santa, Secret Valentine, Hula Hoop Challenge and Tricks, huge family gold party, okay? The first image of the thing is underwater gymnastics, girls in their bathing suits. First of all, I know some of you might get hate, give me some flack for this. Can we stop putting little girls in two-piece bathing suits? Can that be a thing as parents that we make a pact to say our daughters don't need to be wearing nothing? Our daughters actually, it's okay to be covered up when they're young. Can we make a pact to stop putting our kids in effing bikinis? Please. You're sexualizing kids when you bring them to the beach with a bikini and it bothers me. I know I'll get some heat for that because some of you will say, I'm dumb for that, but I don't care. All right. Rockasaurus Rex came up with another one. And let's open that one up here. Okay. So this guy, his name is Sean Daniels. Sorry, I'll put it here. 
This guy's name is Sean Daniels. Okay, let's take a look who Sean is. Sean has six subscribers, no videos, playlists, playlists, food recipes, USA, Piper and Sophie and friends. Like, this guy is a dude. We don't know who he is, and this is all conjecture. Could just be a teenage boy who likes family vloggers. Sure, could be. Could be a guy who likes family vloggers. No, sorry. Look at his Weiss family list. 31 videos, back to school clothing haul, underwater gymnastics. That underwater gymnastics challenge is on showing up on a lot of these guys' playlists. I'm not going to watch it, but I'm going to find it. I'm going to see if I can find the analytics for that video. What's in my backpack? These ones are showing up too. It's starting to surprise me. At least not that thing. Swimsuit shopping. Guys, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Are you understanding that what's her face could say all she wants about why doesn't YouTube just fix it? Because this is where they went next. This is just the next thing. And these are being subscribed to by other men. The scariest part about this whole thing is that they, they are, this is legal. So they can't be can't be arrested for this. There's nothing that could, there's nothing that could happen to them. They just, this is, you're making it, these families are putting out legal ways for these guys to do the things they want to do. And you're going to attract creepers. You're going to attract predators. You're going to attract murderers. You're going to attract people that are going to stalk your family. It happens all the time. And if you look at little Brants, okay, they were targeted and they are still being targeted. Their dog was murdered. There's another family that took their kids off because they found all these, their kids were being pushed onto these sites for maps to use, okay? And then they came back. So just, again, there's suit, there's too much proof out there, everybody. There's too much proof out there. Emma Hansen, amazing, amazing. She has a, not Wisconsin accent, there's another one. She's from somewhere, Midwest. Great accent, we had a great conversation. Emma, you're amazing. And I'm glad that you're, you're helping me with this. Incredible that you're doing this. So she, she sent me uh, a whole drive of this. She's done tons of research. Her daughter's doing research. Her daughter brought this up to her, which was mind blowing to me. She calls them chomos. Playlist with channel person's names found on YouTube search. So I'm gonna put that here for you guys to see. Male playlists include individual list of FV kids. Playlists also include the amount of views each playlist gets. Birthday vlogs, FVs are number one in the trending family channel, which is weird for male playlists. Pregnancy and birth vlogs are number one in trending family members for male playlists. <laughs> I will have a lot of explaining to do if the FBI ever reads my laptop. <laughs> I see a pattern in the playlist and videos that are being saved even in the women's accounts. The majority of them are women's names without any further information or photos, while other kids' accounts, while, other, while others are kids' accounts, most ranging between the possibility of 11 and 17. The accounts are not set to private and most have photos attached. Their playlist gets just as many views, if not more. So, dang, that's eye-opening. These playlists are being put together and they're adding to the, uh, to the algorithm of YouTube. They're being shared with uh, hundreds of thousands of predators. And they're adding to the algorithm because they're being watched and they're making this family money. Do you see the problem now? It's not only that the predators are there and it's dangerous to the kids. They're making money off of it. Large sums of money. She just said they're often getting more plays than the other ones. It's our life. 28 videos, 16 views. Yep. Period kits. Whole playlist of just period kits. Oh my goodness. Period. Kids swimming pools. This guy, Sabda O'Hagan or whatever. Playlist galore of just kids. Eight Passengers by Richard Welsh. 11 videos, pools and kids. John, again, a lot of these probably have monikers of women because they don't want to be flagged, which they're stupid. John, 359 videos, 1,221 views. I'm actually scared for uncovering this right now, guys. I'm not gonna lie, because when you start uncovering these types of webs, you become, I become a target. So just be aware, I am not going to commit suicide. Tara Henderson, look at all of them. I can't even, I don't have time to go through them all. Hundreds. So this is what's gonna happen, everybody. Again, I'm gonna say it all. You come to this channel, a lot of people came because I'm, I'm snarky and I make fun of Micah. But I cannot believe the turn this has taken. I cannot believe what we've uncovered and I didn't even know that this was happening and maybe I'm stupid. But if anything good came from this and the people that are hating on me and making videos about me, all that stuff wanna just come at me, go for it. But look what we uncovered. Would you guys have known about the analytics if I didn't show you the video? Are people maybe up, up, uproaring and making videos about me, how I'm a bully and I'm doing this crazy, I'm gone too far, I'm not even close to going far enough anymore. When you uncover the shit that I just uncovered today, people, don't come at me. Don't judge me for doing what I'm doing on this channel. If you're against me and what I'm doing on this channel, so be it. Keep your mouth shut because all that does is makes you look bad. 
because now you're standing up for Micah. If you come at me because I'm harsh on Micah, I don't give a shit. Don't ever stand up for someone like that. Micah is not even the worst one now that I'm seeing it. You know, it could have gotten worse if they kept going and didn't do this. Someone said, I think it was Rock who said this. Everybody in the family vlogging world now hates the Stoffers more than everybody. Every, the Stoffers ultimately universally hated by everybody now, and this is why. Micah, for whatever, for good or bad, I'm glad this kind of happened. I'm sad for H. I'm so sad for H and what happened with him, and they're still dumpster fire human beings, and I hate them, and she's, just, she's dumb and stupid, and I hate her. But this conversation started, and the pivotal moment that this hit was what happened with Micah, and everybody started talking about family vloggers. And now look where we've gotten. I'm not stopping. Do all the videos you want about me, people. Make all the conjecture and say all the things you want. So am I going to stop talking about Mike and making fun of Brits of Bish and Tiffany Beeston and all these people? No, 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 no. I'm not going to stop at all. I'm going to double down now. If it brings you to my channel because I'm funny and I'm snarky and you like to watch these bishes come down a couple steps, cool. If, I'm, if it means I'm encouraging you not to compare yourself to these women and it helps you feel better about yourself, good. Because that's what they say they're doing and they're not. I'm actually telling you not to. And a lot of people are emailing me messages, tens daily, about how they used to do that. And they didn't see it until they started watching me. Good. Mission accomplished. Not over. Just starting. Okay? Just starting. If you don't like the snark in the videos where I make fun of people, I, I get it's not for you. And I'm not going to be upset with you for not liking that content. I'm not going to be. Not everybody wants to it cringes some people how bad I can be on, how mean I can be to people. I get it. I do get it. But it's the conversation starter. People come for the snark and they stay for the data. They stay for this stuff. This is the stuff that matters. So don't watch that stuff if you don't want to. Okay, not going to blame you. But please share this type of stuff. You, even if you hate me, because ultimately I think you're here for the, the same reason I am. You might hate me for what I'm doing, but I think you are against exploitation of kids. And I think that's true. I think that's why you are here. And that's really important. Okay? And MLMs and then predators. Now this all has become this one giant black hole of grossness that we're uncovering. And that we know that families and the management companies that operate them and their managers and the people that run behind the scenes, you know the Ace family doesn't do this shit themselves, right? They don't edit, they don't film. Maybe they film, but they don't edit. They have management companies that take care of their money. They have management companies that take care of their channel. They have people in on YouTube's end. When you become a certain person, echelon on YouTube, you get a YouTube manager that works for YouTube to help you make more money, to help them make more money. These people know every bit about their data. You don't get bigger like this unless you manipulate the data, the algorithms. You have to understand the back end to get as big as these families get. Bits of Bish is offering this on her channel. She's trying to tell you how to do this. And she's giving you a little bit of a glimpse into how she did this and what you understand. As a YouTuber myself, understanding how this back end works, it's very valuable information. It really is. These analytics I'm showing you, very, very valuable. Costs me, now I'm at $500 US. Thank you for donating, by the way. That's amazing. My wife's not going to kill me. It's great. But again, this stuff is worth billions. This is an industry. It is not a, oh, we're just showing you how to parent. Nope. You have become the, you are the consumer. You are the one being purchased. You are the one spending the money on them. It is not about anything but that. And again, as long as you take your kids off of that, cool. I will watch you clean in your Lululemons and make cookies and decorate your house with shit from TJ Maxx. Okay, I'll watch it. Sure. No, I won't, but some will. That's cool. Go for it. Those channels are awesome. That's creativity. You're doing positive things. As soon as your kids come involved, it's over for me. Nobody's, nobody is safe from my snark at that point, okay? Coming after all of them. Please like me on Instagram, follow me, whatever you call it. I need to boost that algorithm so I can have a bigger voice. Again, people, this is dangerous what we're getting into. What I'm uncovering is dangerous. I'm uncovering webs of these rings and this is gross. YouTube doesn't even want these discovered. Nobody wants these discovered. Most people in echelons of power, public, political, corporate power, don't want you to know that this happens. They'd rather you didn't know, they'd rather everybody just stayed quiet about it. But they will only make moves when people start speaking up. That's why I'm here. Ultimately, that's the end goal for me now. It was not when I started. It really wasn't. It was really just calling out a douchebag for doing something dumb. But look where we got. So everybody out there, go ahead and thank Micah for that. Because she started this whole conversation. She literally was the linchpin that got pulled out from this. And now it's all crumbling. Like a freaking oatmeal raisin cookie. I'll see if I can do a Micah video later to help everybody calm down a little bit and have a little bit of fun or bits of bish or a tiff beastin or something or another one coming after all of them. Let's have some fun, but let's also get real. I can't forget this. You're valuable. Okay. It's Friday. It's an amazing day. It's an amazing weekend to have some fun. Enjoy your families. Be real with your families. Protect your kids. They need you. Protect those around you in your circles if they have kids. Be someone there. Be a support to somebody. 
And if you need support, don't hesitate to reach out and get support that you need from people around you, okay? You are, you are so valuable and the fact that you're part of this conversation and spreading this word just gives you even more value because you care about kids. And if a lot of you are like, oh, I don't know, no one cares about me, blah, blah, blah. You know what? You care about others and you're adding to this energy of like caringness to the world. And that makes you valuable, even if you don't think so. And your butt looks great in those jeans, by the way. Have an amazing day. I'll see you.